Howdy trippers. All right, so to say that I am super pumped about this day trip would still be a massive understatement. Now y'all know the Lone Star State covers over 250,000 square miles and some of those remote reaches are way, way out there. So why would someone take a trip just to go to the middle of nowhere? Well, my buddies and I are about to find out. Daniel back there and hey, Andrew. Yep. And then there's a few more hanging out there. How are you guys doing in the back? Chet, can you let us in? Ooh, it's hot out here. Uh, we oh, just no. need a little I think bit of water. Fine. Just a little no, water. Yep, we talked about this, guys. They'll be fine. Big Bend! Yeah! <laughs> This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. While this entire region is known as the Big Bend, we've got our sights set on Big Bend National Park, right where the Rio Grande bends along the Texas-Mexico border. It's a crazy place with like mountain lions, and rattlesnakes, scorpions, bighorn sheep. Ooh, uh, I like this car. Want to come from El Paso? It's four hours. Austin or San Antonio? About six. Houston or Dallas? Um, better not count. Just enjoy the ride. Whew. Man, there's just this feeling you get when you drive into Big Bend. And, you know, you drive for so long and then you pass the park sign. Take a deep breath, folks. You made it. Out here, the world slows down and the distances seem to stretch to near infinity. Even the visitor center is another 30 miles down the road, but it's along this stretch where the body and soul make a transition as the civilized world fades in your rearview mirror and the desert world welcomes you in with open arms. And if you're lucky, eight legs. Look at this, check this out. What is it? Guess. Check it out. Oh, no way. We found a tarantula. Desert creatures at their finest right here. Oh. Hey, 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 calm movements. This is a desert tarantula. And as long as we stay calm, well, she's pretty much harmless. Now to introduce my adventure buddies, Brandon and Travis. Two guys I like to bring along, because they're crazier than I am. You gotta one up each other, right? <laughs> Put it down my shirt, down my shirt. I just remember my grandpa stopping on little dirt roads and picking up tarantulas as a kid. <laughs> Stop, dude. Wait, wait, okay. That right there has stuck with me my whole life. Welcome to Big Bend. <laughs> All right, buddy. Bye, con Dios, amigo. There you go. And this desert is just teeming with animals. We found tarantulas, jackrabbits, roadrunners, and now white-tailed deer. <laughs> Big Bend is always an exciting place, and we're just getting started. But to start off right, well, let's stop by the visitor center. All right, guys, but before we get too uh, deep into the park, first things first, let's go get our permits. <laughs> All right, I guess. This is the park's main headquarters and biggest visitor center. It's a must stop to get educated on all things Big Bend. The park opened in 1944, becoming the first national park in Texas, but its history goes back much further, with an estimated 10,000 years of human habitation. But even further back, and much bigger back, we're talking dinosaurs, big ones. You see this up top? This is the wing bone of the largest known flying reptile ever found. And it was found here in Big Bend. And it was called Quetzalcoatlus. Yeah? <laughs> I got a woohoo from the back. I tried really hard on that. <laughs> but mostly, Panther Junction is a place to regroup after the long drive and map out the adventures to come. Look at all the different areas. I wish I just had like a stick or something I could put. What? Awesome. You've got like desert lowlands all throughout here. You've got the Rio Grande River that goes all around. So you got this cool river corridor and all these canyons. And then smack in the middle, you got the Chisos Mountains. And on the official park map, it looks something like this. 
Big Bend covers a whopping 1,250 square miles with 118 miles of river border with Mexico. And whether you're looking for canyons like Santa Elena, mountains like the Chisos, desert valleys like the Ernst Basin, or all the countless adventures in between, Big Ben truly has something for everyone. So after some backcountry advice from the friendly park ranger, let's hit the trails. I'm gonna head in the car, Chet. All right, I'll meet you over there. All right, hey man, nice to meet you, man. Hi. My name is Ben, oh. nice to meet you. I'm an uh, interpretive guide, kind of independent freelance kind of thing, you know? Okay. And so I was right. really hoping that we could be like, you know, like a, a friends or something, or I could be like a guide for you guys, and I can help you out on the trail. I see you're like the natural leader of your group, because I look at you, you're All like right. really handsome and stuff. And like two handsome guys on a trail would be great. And right. I'm a good like a pack mule, I can help you guys out there, maybe take some baggage, emotional bag. I'm a good listener, you know? So are you with, are you with the park? With the park, not um, technically speaking with the park. I know the rangers, they talk to me every day. I've taken the test like a lot, so I really know like a lot. And so I've got all the knowledge, the stuff like these guys don't even know. Caves, uh, I'll take you how to like uh, talk to the uh, the mountain lions and cats and stuff. Wow, and you so, can talk to mountain lions. Yeah, plus I got stuff they don't know. I've been out here since like 79, man. Oh, secret okay. watering holes, a uh, secret place to put like your number twos. By the way, it's always important to do like a quick little number two before you go out on a hike. And those are the kind of tips I could really help your group with. Oh, you know, okay. I'm Let's, a good, well, yeah, so you know, like, where, go, where are we gonna end up first? Well, let me, how about this? Let me go round up the guys. Round up the guys, yeah. You hang here. I'll hang we'll here. We'll see if maybe we could use you. And I'll join your, bit. and I'll join your well, group. We'll, I'll join your group out there. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but, but probably not. Yeah. Think so. it over, I'll be, I'll meet you. Okay. He's taking off. I'll meet you with your group there. It's, it's gonna be great. We're gonna be friends. Don't, we're, we're gonna be friends. I can tell we're going to be friends. I think we can do a little better than that guy. As a word of advice for first timers, you can't see everything in one trip. So just pick a few spots and have fun. For our first hike, we're staying in the low desert and heading to the Grapevine Hills, tucked away miles from the pavement to see one of the most iconic images of the park. And joining us as an expert on all things desert, Ranger Maria Lavender. So this is 2.2 miles on Grapevine Hills Trail. It's really famous because of the, the geologic features out here, but also it's a great introduction to the Chihuahuan Desert. The Grapevine Hills are made up of crazy rock formations that are equal parts Mars and Dr. Seuss. But most of all, this two mile hike is a great way to loosen up the legs and get acquainted with the Chihuahuan Desert, which is truly an enchanting place. So there's a lot of plants that are endemic found nowhere else on earth. We have a great diversity of cactuses, but we also have um, a variety of shrubs and grasses. If you took a hula hoop and you laid it on the ground in the Chihuahuan Desert, you would find a great diversity of plants within yeah. that, at least, at least five or 10. Just in the hula hoops area. Yeah. The biodiversity of Big Bend is insane, as it's home to over 1,200 plant species. And you'll quickly learn the basics, like prickly pear, yucca, ocotillo, and this one found nowhere else on earth. This is lechuguilla, means a little lettuce. The root is actually edible if roasted, but it's one of those really special plants that tells you you are nowhere else on earth but the Chihuahuan Desert. Wow, cool. And we say everything in the desert here is going to uh, prick, sting, or poke you. <laughs> and this, this is no exception. All life must be tough as nails to live in the desert. All around are collared whiptail lizards, but there are incredible insects too. Yeah, so this is a millipede, not to be confused with a centipede. These guys are going to be pretty mellow. They're coming out because it rained last week. What's this? Check this out. So this Whoa. is a red velvet ant here. They are velvety or fuzzy looking. Yeah, when you come to places like the Chihuahuan Desert with great plant diversity, it means incredible insect diversity as well. I've never seen one of these ever. That's crazy. And that's not to mention the birds. And actually, Big Bend National Park has more species of birds than any other national park. Really? More than 450 species of birds. Wow. We haven't even mentioned mammals or snakes, but don't be scared, because even looking for rattlers, we can't find a single one. So you have to stay on trail at Big Bend? One of the great things about Big Bend National Park is we encourage off-trail exploration. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, man. All right, then we've lost them. Uh, <laughs> they were just looking for an excuse to mountain goat. One thing that people love about Big Bend National Park is that you can feel small here. No, yeah. long, no longer the commander of your environment around you is something big. In the Big Bend, the rocks are big, the animals are big, the adventure is big. At times, it seems even the word big is too small for this place. 
You don't have to really go too high up in the mountains to get killer views, huh? Big, wide open wilderness that America is famous for. Yeah. You can see that today yourself in Big Bend. <laughs> this hasn't changed in what, thousands of years? Yeah. This view right here. And there might even be a few spots that no human has ever walked before. Ah, that's fascinating. That's fascinating. We'll save those adventures for another day as this well-known path is coming to its famous finish, the Balanced Rock. That is a feat of nature. That's beautiful. That's great. Man. This rock has been a special place for centuries of human visitors, and the lore continues to grow with each new person who sets eyes or feet on this amazing piece of natural architecture. Isn't this awesome? I'm underneath a giant boulder. Wow. I guess at some point this thing's gonna fall down, but hopefully not for the next 30 seconds. You know, every time I come to Big Bend, I try to do something new and different. And this has been on my Big Bend bucket list for a long time. Look, I can just hold it up with my bare hand. Ah, ah, don't, don't fall, Rock. Well, now that we've balanced ourselves above and below the rock, it's time to head back. Now the word big also applies to the sun and the big importance of proper hydration. I told those guys water was important. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. So after a desert hike, it's time to head into a totally different part of the park, the Chisos Mountains, an area that few, if any, expect to find here in the desert. All right, guys, it's time to head up into the high country. And it, it, everything changes when you get up in the Chisos. It's like this, this little mountain range that plopped right in the middle of Big Bend. And keep your eyes out, folks, because it's also bear and mountain lion country. They call mountain ranges like the Chisos sky islands, because like islands rising from the ocean, these rise from the desert floor with their own totally different ecosystems. This range was named after the ancient Chisos Indian tribe, and this world of towering peaks and rugged cliffs feels as ancient as the earth itself. Oh man, yeah, you just gotta get a picture of all that. With Casa Grande towering to the east and the window watching faithfully toward the west, this is the Chisos Mountain Basin. It's home to the historic lodge, camp store, and restaurant, proving that even out here, creature comforts are never that far away. The Chisos Mountain Restaurant is more than just a place to replace lost calories. It's delicious desert dining with a killer view. And this is longtime manager, Dove Brown. This has got to be the restaurant with the greatest view in Texas. It is, and everybody wants to sit at the window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why wouldn't you? That's like... The best I mean, view in Texas. It got, it? Yeah. It blows your mind. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. And more than just stationary mountains, at times, this is the best wildlife viewing window in Texas, too. The bear actually came to the window and put its <laughs> hands in, you know, it was right there. It was, actually, it was that window right there. You're kidding. Turns out, bears love the lodge, too. And if you're here, well, just be ready to get out of the way. And they are funny. They climb up in trees. They're looking for food. It's their land. They come okay, wherever yeah, they want we're, to. We're the visitors, you know, right? We are the visitors. Yeah. Speaking of visitors, the lodge is one of the few places where you're guaranteed to see people. And there'll be people from all over the world. But wherever they've come from, every visitor will find better eaten than they expected here at the lodge. Hitting regional favorites like Mexican food, to burgers, to everything in between. It's yeah. an excellent meal. It's Whatever all good. you want. It's, Whatever all, you want. It, it's all good. So before you start roasting scorpion larvae that you found under a rock, 
do yourself a favor and hit the Chisos restaurant, especially before a big hike. All right, man, so I got some tacos. Looks pretty good. I can't believe you can find food like this up here in the mountains. Yeah. Big Bend. We're gonna need it, because we got a big hike ahead of us. What'd you get, man? I got the high-powered food of enchiladas. Yeah. Always good, <laughs> always good. High-powered? High-powered, you know, uh, to have the magical fruit. And that is, that is really key. All about beans, to scare the bears away when we're in camp tonight. So who all is sharing tents? <laughs> So after chowing down, the remaining plan for the day is to tackle one of the most grueling yet rewarding hikes in the park, the South Rim Trail. It's a seven and a half mile journey uphill to one of the best views in, well, America. And while bears may be an issue, there's something else a little more concerning. So as if the physical demands of hiking a trail up here in the mountains wasn't enough, you also have to watch out for these guys. What it truthfully looks like is an African lioness, but they really do get this big. That's huge. That guy's gotta be 200 pounds. These guys are elusive, and I've heard that by the time you see one, you've already been seen by maybe a half dozen or something. The truth is, we'll be lucky if we see one of these, as long as we don't scream and run like little children and it chases us down. Well, let's go gear up and then hit the trail because the day is, is ticking away. Now the South Rim is no easy hike. I've done it in one day, but don't recommend it. So we'll be camping in the backcountry tonight. And to do that right, here's some essentials you'll need. Backpack, tent, sleeping bag, sleeping pad, chair, not essential, but nice, cooking gear, and flashlight. Phew. And don't forget about water. More water, more water. And then there's food, coffee, first aid kit, and finally, a backpacker to carry it all. Notice I did not say freelance trail guide. Hey guys, I'm here. I made it. Oh, no. I made it's it right here for the trip, guys. Ben. Hey, yeah, buddy. man, it's me. You remember hey. me? You remember yeah, me, right? It's great yeah. to see you. I'm, told, I'm ready. Like we're going on a hike, right? Oh uh, well, I'm I mean, totally we're going on a hike. It's gonna be great, man. We're going on a hike. Guys, I go. Yeah, I ain't going on this guy, man. Try to get rid of him. All right. Are you sure you got enough water? Because like, you should always. Use some, I got some water somewhere. No, like you guys are like really beautiful dudes. Yeah. I, I'm really cheap, you know. Like I mean, I don't cost well, much. Yeah. Look, like a, why don't we? I'm not like a cheap just, date or anything. You know? Meet you. Meet you at the top. Yeah. Meet okay. you at the top. Yeah, that's cool. You got yeah. the secret trails. You'll beat us. Yeah, yeah we yeah. can. Uh, we'll that's be friends idea. up there. Yeah. We'll see. We'll take, we'll see. Take, man. take a bath. Like, we'll water? see. Take a yeah. bath. We'll see you up there, man. Like Later. Like, I'll meet you up there. Okay. Yeah, I'll 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 meet them. I'll meet him up there. I'll find him up on the trail. Let's find him up on the trail. All right, so here we are at the Chisos Mountain Lodge. We will be hopping on the Pinnacles Trail. We're looking at about seven and a half miles to camp. Today. Today, right now. Are we gonna make it before dark? Well, there's only one way to find out. So we are off, but not even a few steps in, and there's a reminder that we are headed into a true wilderness. No! <laughs> like a rat snake. <laughs> Dude, that's why we bring Travis on the trip. Oh! See you later, man. Off. Those yeah. can bite. Even though they're not venomous still. Snake All right, well one done. Now trail. let's hit the trail. <laughs> All right. Phew! Talk about motivation to stay on your toes. But before too long, all I'm thinking about is the trail and how amazing it is to be out here among these massive peaks. That one over there, we got Carter Peak. Ward Mountain, right up there between those trees. That's Emory Peak, the tallest point in Big Bend. 7,825 feet. And then the big dog over there, Casa Grande, the big house. All the mountains around the Chisos Basin are just so rugged. It's like uh, the land that time forgot. The feeling I get hiking out here is surreal, but the feeling in my legs could better be described as burning. I love hiking up in the Chisos, and I really love this trail. But the killer part of it is you get almost all of your elevation right here in the first bit. Woo! Oh, I'm feeling like I should have been training for this. Yeah. Switchbacks. Switchbacks and more switchbacks. Switch foot, good band. Switch back, terrible band. It's cool, you know you're up in the high country when you start to see less and less cactus and way more of these big, beautiful trees. You get hardwoods and softwoods, oaks here, pinyon pines, weeping junipers, alligator junipers. It's quite a bit of shade up here, too. Yeah. You know a lot about trees, man. A little bit. <laughs> God, thanks. 
Okay, now we got enough elevation, you can really see the Chisos Basin. It essentially is just a big soup bowl, and down there in the middle is the lodge. So that's where we started, right there, boys. Pretty far away. Yeah, I wish it was farther, because <laughs> we still got a long way to go. You know what's really cool? Just listen. Not a single car or plane anywhere. You gotta come all the way up here, find silence. I feel like I hear a locust buzzing. Other than the locust. All the way on the mountain. Woo! How are we doing, Andrew? Doing great. Yeah, buddy. Let's go see what's down here. Oh, wow. Now we're looking into the other side, away from the basin, up one of these side canyons. Amazing. They call this Pinnacles Trail for a reason. And as we hike past the giant volcanic rocks, well, we finally make it up to the rim. Woo! That's the hard part of the hike. So we've made it up. This is the cutoff for Emory Peak. We've gone more than halfway, but more importantly than that, we've gained way more than half of the elevation. Maybe in Texas, but that was decently hard. <laughs> yeah. Don't underestimate no them Texas way. mountains, man. They'll get you. Luckily, from here on, it levels out a bit. But that doesn't mean there are any less steps to take. But maybe the most fascinating part is that the mountain keeps changing. Wow, the topography has changed again. We are now hiking through a canyon. Pretty awesome. This is my fourth time up here and I've never seen this canyon running with water. That right there is a welcome sight for the animals in the Chisos Mountains. That's cool. All right, I think we have just found the leftover set from The Walking Dead. Terrifying. Ah! Around every corner of this hike is just something that drops your jaw. That's what I love about hiking out here. You think you've seen it all? And again, Big Bend surprises you. But nothing in any part of Big Bend or Texas, in my opinion, is quite as jaw-dropping as our final destination, the South Rim. Wow, look at those clouds. Man, I've seen a lot of good views in Texas. This is, this is my favorite. I think I agree. I mean, we're looking into two countries here. We got Texas and Mexico. This is like one of the few places where you get so high, you literally feel like you're looking at a map. While all this land is technically public, well, the experience of the South Rim hits everyone in a very personal way. We're so high above the, the ground, it almost looks like a painting. And when I look at a painting, I always consider the painter. And out here, you know, that's just, the creator of the earth. It's pretty amazing. Man, that rain is moving in quick. <laughs> Let's go, we better set up camp. Uh-oh, too late. And just as we're making our way to camp, darkness and downpour. All right, so we definitely did not make it to camp by dark. <laughs> and we got showered with a lot of uh, Chisos Mountain rain. I don't recommend That's fine. arriving after it's dark, really but hard. we're gonna set up yeah, camp. I got Get the yeah, stove ready, cook some dinner, and then there. hit the hay yeah, because that was a really good hike. What a day. It takes a while to get to Big Bend, but every mile of effort is matched tenfold in reward. Unparalleled plants and animals, exhilarating adventures, leave you breathless vistas. And while my legs may feel dead, I feel as alive as ever. All right, guys, just zipping up and turning in for the night. Until tomorrow, when I see all y'all out on the trail, Bye, con Dios, amigos. <sighs> hey, brother, is there any like room what? in this tent for me? I'm a How good. How did you get in here? I'm a really good Look cuddler, out. man. Like, Look I just out. need, I just need some leg. Where, where are you going? I would, I, I was gonna make espresso. Man, he followed us. He followed us. Ah! Ah! Daniel. Daniel. Will Chet Daniel. make it back to camp? fall to his doom, or be left dangling like a participle for all eternity. Tune in next week to find out. Wow, this really is a cliffhanger. Now you may be wondering, why would someone go, wait, what, oh man, I had this written. All right, now you may be wondering why was, and now you may be wondering, why would someone trip just to go to the, wait. Now you may be, sorry. All right. <laughs> oh, that's bad. <laughs> that's dedication. <laughs> we might have forgotten to get a shot on the South Rim at Big Bend, and that's not exactly the kind of place you go back just for a pickup shot. Hey, huh? I, let me get this what? stupid what? zipper. Who's this? Let's do it again. Who's coming in? Let's do it again. Are you? I, I can snuggle with you. Come on in.
Yeah, man. With just, me? All yeah, right. just get in here. Hey there, brother. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is okay. not how we planned it. Hey there, brother. It. That's not how it's supposed to work. <laughs> Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy, y'all. Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. <laughs> Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, Condias, amigas.